Hi guys, how we doing? So we're on to episode four now. Uh, today we're going to be looking at some more specific areas of the battle along the right hand side there. Uh, at a later date, as I go through these slowly, I'm going to show you what certain features in some of the other modules like library, book, slideshow, and print. I'll be going into those at a later date. Today we're looking at just the stuff in the develop module. So with no further ado, let's get started. Today we're looking at the tone curve, and we'll be looking at camera. No, we'll be looking at effects, that's the one. Got the name for it for a second there. So, uh, let's, let's dive. This is the tone curve. Um, as you can see, it's a straight line at the moment, but if I pull it around, things happen. I use this occasionally. It really does depend on the image, whether I use it or not. That's... But you can see how it's affecting, and basically... It looks very similar to the exposure side, as it's just a bit more. Fine tunable to a different extent. If I move that up, it brings up out of the dark side, as we can see, and then there's the shadows. We can move that around and do all sorts of things and make into an actual curve. Get as much detail and we can also move the centre mat, the mid tones, highlight, shadows, we can move them all over the place. And you can see behind we kind of got a hidden Here's the ground. We can also grab a certain area and move it like that with that little tool there. And here we've also got highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. And this is the thing that I use quite a bit. Which is making the point curve go towards a certain contrast. Which we can do like that. Fairly simple and straightforward. Moving on and down to effects. Not many, not all I can do, but obviously we've got a vignette here, which can go white or dark, I tend to go dark, doesn't really work on this image, so, because we want that detail in this corner, but as we can do, you move, move the midpoint around like so, you can change the roundness of it, you can change how much feathered it is. Also in effect, you can add grain. So if you're wanting that kind of grainy, noisy, harsh kind of image, but you were in a deal and the settings were there that just didn't get your ISO to a point that would introduce enough noise, you can add it in post. If I just add a significant amount there so you can see it. I can change the size to either side and how rough it is. Okay. Nice and simple. I'm get rid of the grey off this image just simply because I don't want it there. But there you go. Um, there's not a lot really to discuss within that. I'm pretty sure there's no things that happen when holding Alt in here at all. No. So that's it for this one. Um, we're on episode four. We're going to do one more. Oh, excuse me. Episode today. And then I'm going to leave it for a while because it'll be five weeks of episodes at that point. And I will go on to looking at the library module. After I've gone through the library module, I will go into Perfect Effects 8. Once I've done a couple of videos because there's not a massive amount to talk about in there that will take that long. I'll do Perfect Effects 8 and then I'll go back and I'm going to do book, slideshow and print within Lightroom. And then after that we might move on to Final Cut, might move on to Photoshop, might move on to Motion. Probably onto Final Cut and Photoshop. They'll be the next two applications that we do after this. And obviously, we've got the OS 10 Yosemite review coming up fairly soon, guys. But I'll talk about that a bit more at the end of the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Adios.